The camera's rolling and you're not ready. Mm, where was this video? Haha. -ha. Hi, my name is Matthew, and today I thought I would reflect on my most anticipated reads of 2018. I have read all five books. I did a video, I will link it down below, where I picked out five books for the year that I was excited to read. And then I read them. Up first is The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin, translated by Anton Herr. Take a guess. I liked this book. I loved this book. Of course I loved this book. I will link all videos, all of the content, so much content that I have made regarding this book down below. Enough said. Up next is Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti. I actually got to attend the book event for this book and I met her for the second time now and she signed my book and it was lovely. They gave out little disco ball necklaces. I had such a riot of a time and then I read the book and the book is phenomenal. As anticipated, was received. I think that this book is absolutely brilliant. If you don't know, it's um, Eurovision in space. That's the cell. But it's also just like this deep, profound examination of human existence and the power of music. And those two things wrapped with like quirky fun times meets Douglas Adams. There you go. Such, such a great book. And I didn't review it on my channel because I only had good things to say about it and I didn't think that video would be interesting. So here's your review right now. The biggest disappointment of my most anticipated reads was in fact Mushroom Girls in Love. This is a manga and it has everything going for it, right? It is about an all-female planet of intelligent fungi and two of those intelligent fungi fall in love. But, because they are not compatible, one of them begins to rot. What will happen? It's like lesbians in outer space, but they're also mushrooms. And I was so excited for this to exist. It was also a one-shot manga, and there's so few just like one volume manga. Most are like enormous 80 volume series. So th this, this, like I said, had everything going for it. And the result was good. It was entertaining. I believe it was a 3 out of 5 stars for me. It was very poorly paced. It was almost like, what is it called when you, like the screen? Storyboarding. It felt like storyboarding for a movie or the anime that never happened because it would jump to other scenes and these jump cuts were like really, really harsh. And then information would be revealed in specifically only the last panel of a page and it was, it was, it was rough. The art was beautiful. The concept was brilliant. The execution, not so good. The fourth most anticipated book of this past year, for me, was Brave by Rose McGowan. And we all know how that turned out. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, I think separating this book from its author is an actually great book. It's really well written, it's very personal, but at the same time so practical. It's entertaining, it's empowering, like it has a lot of really great things going for it. But then, you know, stuff happened. So I, I, I chose to compartmentalize my experience with this book. I really enjoyed the experience of reading the book. I also listened to the audiobook of it and she read it. And because she is an actress, she is good at reading audiobooks. And then there also was music thrown in from her CD that she released, and it, it was a great experience. But then... It got yucky. It got yucky because real life happened, and real life cannot be pulled away or compartmentalized for books. Because you have to reconcile, as a human being, morally, with what goes on in the world. And if you choose not to, I don't want to associate with you. I should get off my soapbox. What I'm saying is, the book as a text, really, really good. The book in conjunction with its subject matter, because author exists and author's persona in the outside world is not a positive one, not great. I feel like it's a shame in many ways that this book is going to be written off, because in many ways it could be a great foundation for discussion. Discussions not only about, you know, feminism and the Me Too movement and all of these important things going on in the world, but then also about white feminism and very problematic types of Me Too content. So I... I want this to be like 
studied in like a socio-political classroom. And lastly was Seventeen by Hideo Yokoyama, translated from the Japanese by Louise Heel Kawai, who did Miss Ice Sandwich, which I super loved. This is a book that I super anticipated because of 6-4. I loved 6-4, and I feel like regarding Hideo Yokoyama, American publishers just like don't know what to do with him. And here's why. We don't have an existing genre that we can sell, like a sellable genre in America yet, of what he does. What he does is he puts people in close spaces and you as a reader watch them sweat. And it's enthralling. But it's also equally dry. So it's like Aaron Sorkin newsroom West Wing, but with like a gentle undercurrent of like coziness with an overcurrent of thriller. It's weird. There is no genre for this. And so with 6-4, I feel like we fell into a trap because it was marketed as this amazing thriller. It sold so many copies in Japan. It was very successful. And it was. It was very successful. But then when people read it and they got a psychological drama, not a thriller, people couldn't even finish the book. And yes, that book is very dry, but for some reason I find it enthralling. With Seventeen, we get kind of a similar thing. Seventeen is about a plane crash that occurs and a news team trying to report on it. And I feel like it's marketed as like this fast-paced, exciting, I mean, look at the cover that they did for it. I feel like it's marketed as like this super ultra in-your-face novel. And it's not. It's so quiet. It's so simple. It's so pinpointed and poignant. And you get these brilliant discussions about morality and odd intricacies about the way that, like, newspapers work. It just, like, it doesn't work in American publishing. I just don't feel like there's a place for it yet, and I would want there to be, because I really like these books. Most people will find Hideo Yokoyama's work dry. Even boring. I find it so, so captivating. So that's it. Those were the five books that I listed as being the most excited for in 2018. I don't know if I'm gonna do that for 2019, because I'm actually currently reading a lot of stuff that's pubbing in 2019 that I am excited for. So I could just, like, talk about those, but that seems a little, like, meh. I don't know. So I want to know, what were your anticipated books? Or, like, you can pick one. This is for the comments down below, so that you can interact with my video, and then I can gain more success as a booktuber. So I want to know, um, one book that you were super anticipating for 2018, I want to know if you read it, and I want to know if you liked it or not. And then if you're feeling, like, frisky, you can tell me if I would like it or not, because I always love a recommendation. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.